Welcome to One Mind Zen. Tonight's talk is given by Bryant Guy. Most bad writing starts with a cliche sentence like, it was a dark and stormy night. Well, some stories of great value also start that way too. And so it just so happens that this story, to start my talk, starts exactly that way. It was a dark and stormy night. It was a dark night when a ship from the Korean Peninsula docked in the Chinese harbor of Tanhang Castle. Two men aged 44 and 36 disembark that ship and start on a journey down the road on foot. As they walk, a storm comes on and they're met with strong winds and heavy rain. In the darkness, they find a shelter for the night in an underground shelter. The older man being thirsty during the night finds what he thinks is a gourd full of water and drinks from it. The water tastes sweet. He drinks it all down. The next morning in the light of day, both men see that they had actually spent the night in a burial chamber. And the one of the men, whose name was Wanyo, realized that what he thought was a gourd full of sweet water was in fact a human skull, and it was filled with putrid water and maggots. Well, this caused in him a great realization. He realized that when he did not know what it was he was drinking from, he felt refreshed, and yet when he found out in the light of day, he felt disgusted and discomforted. He realized that everything, all of our experience, is created by the mind. This realization reminded him of a passage he had read. All the three worlds are illusion. All is mere fabrication of the mind. What it caused in him at that moment was great joy and he felt like dancing and singing. But the passage that he had read, which had inspired him, was from a text called Awakening of Faith in the Mahayana. This text, Awakening of Faith in the Mahayana, is a very short but very densely packed philosophical outline and encapsulation of all of Buddhist Mahayana thought at the time. And it was hugely influential in East Asia. One of the best things about it that it provides is an easy way to remember the whole thing. Buddhism has lots of lists. In fact, it's famous for its numbered lists. Everything it seems in Buddhism can be found somewhere on a numbered list sometimes multiple times on multiple lists. In the case of Awakening of Faith, it has a great outline that can be encapsulated as simple as one, two, three, four, five. That's a pretty easy mnemonic device to remember the whole thing. Kind of like coat hangers, you can hang all the rest of the teachings on a great memory device. The structure of the teachings in the awakening of faith are in the form of one, two, three, four, five. The first, number one, is one mind. Now what that refers to is one mind of suchness. And this concept was and still is a hugely foundational and influential concept in most of East Asian Buddhism, and in fact, almost all of Buddhism. Another text that was very influential starts out its first chapter saying that all things are one mind, uh, the mirror of Zen. Uh, another Zen master, Huang Bo, talks about one mind. An earlier uh, thinker, actually somewhat around that time, plus or minus a few hundred years, Vasubandhu, an Indian monk and philosopher, uh, was hugely instrumental in coming up with 
not only a Buddhist psychology and explanation of it, uh, developments on it called the Abhidharma, but later uh, something called Yogacara, otherwise known as Chittamatra, which means mind only. And mind only in Vasubandhu's uh, ideas, uh, it's, it's quite an involved topic, but one of the ways you can boil it down is that the only way we can know reality is through the mind. There may be an objective reality outside the mind, but we can't know it other than through the mind. And so one interpretation of mind only is that everything that we experience in our lives, when we meditate, when we drive a car, when we eat dinner, everything, is only knowable through our minds. Earlier in the Pali Suttas, the Buddha gave a very short talk called the Sava Sutta, which means the all, in which he talked about what is the all? The all is the eyes and eye contact, the ears, ear contact, the nose, nose contact, touch, uh, basically the five senses and the mind and objects of mind. He called this the sensorium, otherwise known as the all. And his point was, is that all of reality comes to us through these six sense doors, through these six entrances. That's the only way we know of things is through this. And to me, that is a great complementary teaching to the mind only idea. Anyway, so this is item number one in the awakening of faith, the idea of one mind. Number two is the two aspects of one mind. The first aspect is minds in, the mind in terms of the absolute, which in Buddhist lingo is generally called emptiness. Uh, emptiness is also can be called suchness, but in Awakening of Faith, they put a twist on that. Uh, the twist is that uh, emptiness in general in Buddhism means that all things are empty of inherent existence. And the twist that Awakening of Faith puts on that is that there is an absolute and is the emptiness of all things, and yet there is one thing that is not empty, because it is full of certain excellent attributes, um, that being the mind. Then the second of the two aspects of one mind is the mind in terms of the relative existence or phenomena. And that in the text is a quite lengthy section describing the eight consciousnesses and storehouse consciousness, the eighth, which harks back to Vasubandhu's mind only theory as to how reality is created for us. Next on our journey, we have the three, the three greatnesses or the three great things about suchness. So what are the three great things about suchness? Well, the first is the essence of suchness. It's, it's great. And when I say great, and again, Mahayana, the word Maha means great. Yana means vehicle, and so the teachings of Mahayana are teachings of the great vehicle, and great in this sense is not big. It doesn't mean that it's better than, than your vehicle, although some usages of the term um, in colloquial terms uh, took that on because they started describing the older teachings as the Hinayana or the lesser vehicle greater and lesser. But what Maha really refers to is greatness in terms of the absolute, in terms of ultimate reality. Mahayana philosophy, Buddhism, talks about uh, ultimate reality in a way that the original teachings in the Theravada or Hinayana did not. This is sort of like going from the smaller view to the much expanded view or an expanded application of the teachings. 
So the three great things, or the three maha, great things about suchness, the first is the essence of suchness. Uh, just the fact of it, just the realization of it uh, is, a, is an ultimate thing and is hugely beneficial in our practice and is the whole point, essentially, of practice of the Dharma. The second of the great things is the attributes of suchness, the excellent qualities. And this is one of the twists that the awakening of faith puts on uh, sort of a development or its interpretation of the emptiness teachings. It says that um, suchness uh, actually does have some very excellent qualities. Um, I, won't I won't list them here because got to get to the rest of the outline but the third greatness is the influence of suchness and this section gets into the bodies of the buddha which is a whole other area of theory that talks about the result of practice the result of realization is the three bodies which are really are one body but they differentiate in terms of the realization of suchness or emptiness, the dharmakaya, the real, the the rebirth symbolically um, or experientially in a pure land, uh, sambhogakaya or energy body, and then there's the nirmanakaya, which is essentially our physical body that's the vehicle that allows us to do all these things, that sort of uh, manifests in this world to give us this opportunity. Those are the three greatnesses about suchness. Moving on to number four are the four faiths. So here we have the three traditional refuges of Buddha, Dharma, and Sangha, but they're adding a fourth item, which is at the top of their list. Number one, the, four, the first of the four faiths is faith in ultimate reality or suchness. So an important aspect of this is that traditionally Buddhism and Zen have talked about the necessity of three things uh, to progress in your practice, great doubt, great courage, and great faith. Um, and so faith does come to play, especially because suchness uh, and emptiness are not things that are readily visible. Uh, they're more something that is intuited. Um, and so a certain aspect of faith uh, is very valuable when coming to play uh, in one's progression towards liberation. Finally, on our tour of the one, two, three, four, five outline are the five practices. Now here, they take kind of a shortcut because it really should be six practices. Um, and what they are, are the transcendent paramitas. Uh, but in the awakening of faith, uh, they have combined the last two paramitas of meditation or concentration and the sixth one of wisdom or insight into one, which has two parts. So it's a little bit of a cheat. And I, my suspicion is that the author of this outline just wanted to make it numerically work out. Um, but it really doesn't matter because um, of the five paramitas, the first, as we all may know, is generosity. Um, the second is morality, sila, which is, you know, the typically understood as the observation of the precepts, uh, whether it be the five precepts or the 10 or the 16. The third is patience, transcendent patience or ksanti. The fourth is Virya, translated as energy or zeal that is required to maintain our practice and our efforts in the world. And now we come to the final, which is sort of the two-parter, um, which is really the meat and bones of the practice, uh, although the other paramitas are absolutely legitimate practices in their own right, and all of them can lead to awakening and liberation which is why they are called paramitas. One translation of paramita is vehicle that brings us to the other shore. So the last two are concentration, otherwise known as samatha, shamatha, 
which can lead us to a calm concentration or uh, type of meditation. And then the other half of that, the other part, usually done after the calmness has been achieved, is what's called the vipassana or the insight or the clear seeing meditation. Uh, and this is the prajna or wisdom component of the five or six paramitas. So as a practice, even the awakening of faith is mirroring um, what many other traditions in Buddhism, not just Zen, Shan, or Seon uh, have done, but uh, many of them arrive at some version of the calming meditation and the insight meditation, where we look at reality as it is and just observe it and see it clearly uh, with wisdom. So there you have it. Simple as one, two, three, four, five. And uh, I'm going to sign off now and peace. <laughs>